Hello and welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel and the video I've been doing about this Zoe. It's created quite a bit of attention and I welcome that, particularly the video that will be above my head now about driving in minus seven temperatures. Oh my word, has that brought in some interesting comments. More or less sort of, I'd say a 60-40 split, 60% saying, oh my word, I couldn't be bothered all that faffing around to charge. And the other 40% going, fantastic, isn't the Zoe 50 kilowatt hour brilliant? But I welcome all the comments because it just means that that's been seen a considerable amount of times on YouTube, which is great for me and my little channel. Anyway, a lot of people are asking for the final numbers, the final figures of me buying the Zoe, putting the new seat in, Again, I'll pop a link to um, that video I've done. And what the final numbers are like cost-wise. So I'm going to break it down um, as follows. So as you know, I started out after I bought the Zoe online at Shoreham Auctions. Again, this is all in the, the videos. I'm going to put a link in as well for the playlist for this Zoe, the Zoe episodes at the end of the video. And I'll put it in the description as well. So, bought the car for £4,800, just to recap. Then with the fees from Shoreham, it came to £5,006.40. Booked a flight down to Southampton, that was £285.14p. The hotel in Worthing was £84.60. And then I bought a set of seats for the Zoe on eBay, which I picked up from a seller in Cambridge via eBay. And that was £190, but I just bought the driver's seat. Again, that's covered in a video. So, before I actually set off from Shoreham Auctions, the Zoe so far owes me, or I'd spent, £5,566.14. But obviously they've got to pay for charging, and as it turned out, another hotel, etc, etc. So I'm going to run through them really briefly and you'll see where I'm coming from. So I charged with various rapid charges. The total spend for rapid charging came to £88.31 and that helped me to cover 853 miles. I'll come back to that in a minute. The other extra costs were food, the ferry and the hotel uh, coming back because I stayed at Abington. So that came to £218.25p so that, in addition to the purchase cost uh, that it owed me, which was 556614, means the Zoe, when I arrived back here on Orkney, I had spent £5,872.70. That's including the seat, all the food. I actually treated James to a meal. So, like for instance, one of my meals came to £63.65 because it was about 30 quid each for a nice big slap up meal. Um, things like screen wash, um, I went to the Three Bridges Cafe in Tomartin, which was lovely food, that was £6. And the Northlink Ferry back was £14.30. No, it wasn't. The, the food on the Northlink Ferry coming back was £14.38. So, I've allowed for everything, including the ferry back, and that's what the car now owes me, £5,872.70. Now just briefly going back to the cost for charging. Something I hear regularly is that using public charges means it's more expensive to run an EV than it does a diesel. Right, pin back your lug holes. Diesel, I'm told, is one fifty a litre. That's £6.75 a gallon. Now I spent £88.31 on rapid charging. That ranged from 30p right up to 79p. As I've said so many times before, I don't care what it costs. As long as it works and I can get on a charger, I don't care. I really don't because it's so rare that I use a rapid charger. So uh, £88.31 based on £6.75 a gallon equates to 13 gallons in fuel equivalent. Um, and that equates to, 
if I was to put that amount of fuel into a car to cover that distance, it would mean the car would have to do 65 miles to the gallon. Now some diesels on a good day with nice temperatures at a steady speed will get 65 to 70 miles to the gallon. I was driving in minus seven temperatures, so just take that into account. And I can see the comments now. I've driven in minus 50 and I got 60 miles to the gallon out of my Blue Motion Volkswagen diesel. Great, fantastic for you, I'm really pleased, that's great. But what I'm trying to say is, despite the fact that I spent £88.31p on the most expensive way of filling my EV, it's still equated to about 65 to the gallon. So it's on par, let's be really generous to the fossil fuel brigade, it's on par with a really economical diesel car for me to drive those 853 miles. Now, for those that are watching my videos, yes, it was fully charged when I picked it up from Shoreham. They've got solar panels, so most of that would have been off solar energy, and I didn't have to pay for it, it was already charged. And I stopped at my mum's, and she allowed me to plug into her car charger, so I had a free charge at my parents'. So if it was all purely public charging, it would be a little bit more. Not a massive amount more, but a bit. But it just balances out and just highlights the fact that even with rapid charging, when I'm doing a long trip, I will choose to stay in hotels that have got free overnight charging. Now, Zero Carbon World had a tie-up a while ago with Best Western. And there's a number of hotels I've stayed in in the past that are Best Westerns with a free uh, 3.6 or even 7 kilowatt uh, wall mounted box, it's the old Rolex chargers from Zero Carbon World. And most hotels, I think all of the hotels with those in, haven't charged me a penny. So the great thing about EVs, you have options, right? You have options on what you want to pay. And you arrange your trip with hotel stops like I do to just just because it's more convenient and uh, even if a hotel asks me for, for some money I will pay it because 90, 90 to 95 percent of the time this car will be here at home charging from solar or if it's the depths of winter like it is now I will be filling up on octopus go rate which for the moment for me is 9p a unit from half 12 12 30 a.m till 4 30 a.m in the morning and my day rate is around 30 pence. So there are options, and that's the great thing about EVs. You are not tied to public rapid charges that have to earn something in order to get their money back for the investment and the upkeep and the maintenance, uh, the grid connection. I don't think there is any rapid charge provider, the Instavolts, the grid serves, the Offsprays, uh, the ionities of this world that are rolling in cash. They've made massive upfront investment knowing that in years to come, yes, they're going to make a profit, but at the moment they're not. So for those times you pull up to a rapid and um, people say, oh, it's 79p a unit, that's horrendous because it's only 30p day runners. They've got to earn something to start recouping their initial investment and like I always say it's like me racking up to a moto services and going to a Costa coffee I don't stand at the counter and say I'm not paying three pounds 75 for a flocky mocha cappuccino I can make that for 10p at home we don't say that because we're glad to pay for the service the convenience of racking up to somebody they've got the product we want it there and then and we have a nice coffee. Now some might take flasks, that's entirely up to you if you want to do a long trip and have your own coffee at the side, but the vast majority of us appreciate and avail ourselves of the service of having a nicely fresh made coffee and prepared to pay for it. It's the same with Rapids. I'm prepared to pay whatever it takes for that one-off trip that I need to do when I'm down south. So I think the rapid charging costs, when I've sat down and worked out all the figures, are on par with a petrol or diesel car that does 65 to the gallon. There you go. Bit of a rant. <laughs>
but I've done the figures. Um, we shall be keeping this car. I'm going to also do some more digging. Some people have said there is a heating element in the driver's seat. This hasn't got the heat pack fitted. I really would like the heated steering wheel and the heated seats. Um, but I'm going to do a bit more digging. And I'm also going to try and find out what that airbag is underneath the squab of the driver's seat. Um, yeah, I think it's for and stop the driver having that anti-submarine uh, collision avoidance system uh, where in a frontal crash they can actually slip underneath the seat belt. I think that's what it is but we will find out when I take my Stanley blade to the old seat. If you have been thank you for watching so, sorry if this was a bit of a rant but I just thought you'd like to know the cost to come back and in particular the cost to rapid charge. If you have been thanks for watching and uh, we'll definitely see you next time with another update on this great Renault Zoe. I've done over a thousand miles in this. Still feels like a 20,000 mile Zoe, really does. We'll see you next time. If you want to watch my playlist, watch that one. And um, yeah, thank you.